in an ambitious project, a privateer South African team will also take on the best in the world on the 2012 Dakar Rally. The Century Property Racing team has entered a locally designed and built car, the CR4, to be campaigned by Mark Corbett and Francois Jordan. So now to the moment we've all been waiting for, with the car. Julian and Rudy, really your creation, so you want to unveil it? Yeah, it definitely is a dream. I think second time lucky this time. The first time we ended up with a terrorist threat, so it got cancelled. But this time we were all set to go. I think it's quite a logistical exercise this time. We're taking all our own service trucks from here, all our own spares. This time it's our own design from a car point of view. I think everybody's seen us race the local championship and we're on version four of the car. So hopefully we sorted out all the reliability issues and we're off. Century Property Development is a family owned and run business and the Dakar Rally project has taken on a fun element for the Corbett family. Yeah, it definitely is a, my mom and dad are coming with on the racing, racing side and it definitely is a fun exercise for us. I mean of course it's serious, we want to win the two wheel drive class at Dakar and that's our real goal this year, to go there and give it a go for that. But at the same time you must have fun. Competing in the Dakar Rally has long been a priority for Century Racing and the futuristic looking CR4 has been developed over the last couple of seasons in the APSA Off-Road Championship. Yeah, there's quite a few changes to the race car. Obviously it's FIA, the main changes in terms of safety with fuel cells and roll cage. In the Dakar we run a lot more fuel. In local races you get to refuel every 200 kilometers, but Dakar you have to essentially run eight or 900 k's without refueling, so we've got 450 litres on board. And the car will weigh a lot more in Dakar form with onboard jacks. But our car is quite unique, you know. Most of the two-wheel drive cars in Dakar run a trailing arm suspension and we'll be the only ones there with A-arm rear. So I think we stand a good chance. The Dakar Rally is a unique event and the approach taken to the race by the Corbett family and the Century Racing team is like a breath of fresh air. I think it's fairly unique for a South African team to be participating. I think we're the first privateer team that's going to participate with a fully South African built car and prepared car. It really is something different and it's a unique design, you know, it's really our design that we've perfected over the last four years. So hopefully we can pull it off. I think it'll be a great thing for South Africa on the world stage. The Century Racing Team took a leaf out of the Toyota book and also headed for Namibia to shake down the car and for the crew to get a fuel for desert and real sand racing. Yeah, we went down to the southwest, to go up to southwest to go testing and we really had a great time up there. I think uh, we underestimated how difficult the dunes are going to be in Dakar. It was quite an exercise to learn how to drive on them again after Dubai. I'd forgotten a lot in four years, so it was really good to get there. And I think Francois is definitely one of the most competent navigators I know, and I think he'll be a real asset on the team. Former South African champion Francois Jordan is another Nissan Motorsport old boy who served under Glen Hall and will sit alongside Corbett in a team packed with off-road experience. Uh, Francois is navigating for me. Uh, he was going to navigate last time we were in Dakar, and it got cancelled. And then Colin Matthews, who's in our team, he races us. He's going to be there. And then, of course, Rudy and Julian. Rudy is responsible for the design of the car and through all the various iterations on our CR4. He really is a kind of benchmark of the team and without him we wouldn't be going. I think he's done all the logistics. And there's Rudy who builds the cars and preps them and navigates them here locally. And then John is coming with, that navigated in the past. My dad's coming with. Obviously we've had to detune the Dodge for him. We worry that he'll get into the spectator race. My mom's coming to kind of keep my dad under control a bit. When we converted the Dodge from left-hand drive to right-hand drive, we left the left brake pedal on the left-hand side just to calm him down. And that's it. That's the team. Motorsport competitors are eternal optimists and are always up for a challenge. Francois Jordan will arrive at the Dakar Rally full of confidence. I think our chances are pretty good. Uh, we went up to Swak for three days of testing in the dunes is very similar to what we're going to experience and the car is very good. Uh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with the traction, with the way it gets out the dunes. It's going to be a great test of skill of, of driving and navigating but the vehicle is surely up to it. The Century Racing CR4 will be competing in the two-wheel drive buggy category. The car is powered by a Lexus V8 engine and the lack of four-wheel drive doesn't bother your darn at all. 
Yes, it's a two-wheel drive division car. It's not a four-wheel drive as the normal Nissan's, Toyotas, and the other ones out there. It's a, it's it's got the advantage that you can you may carry the deflation system, and you may carry also have a six-speed gearbox, which gives you a bit of more top end speed. So that's the advantages. It's very light as well, uh, and I think we'll do pretty well in the dunes. The experienced Jordan has been on a sabbatical from off-road racing for a season or two, but doesn't see a lack of activity as a drawback of any sort. No, I've been with Mark in the car previous years. We uh, we did some testing for the previous Dakar car together, and he's a professional driver, and I think I'm a professional navigator, so it's a bit of a language that you got to adapt to, but there's no other problems with that. He's a very easy guy to be with. He listens carefully, and I think it's going to be a super event for us both. The logistics of competing on the Dakar Rally are a major undertaking. For the Century Racing Squad, this department has been taken care of by Mark Corbett's father, Ernest, who is himself a former off-road race driver and a fierce competitor. OK, well, the truck behind us here, I don't know if you'll get that just now, but that's, that's essentially um, the support, the technical support with the spare engines, gearboxes and so on. Um, and what they do is they leave the bivouac in the morning and go to the next, next bivouac which is where, of course, the pits are. And this vehicle here is what is called a chase vehicle. And essentially what that does is it goes with the um, competing vehicle to the start, just to make sure the last minute things are, are you there to handle if, there's, if it's needed. And then we have to get to the end of the race section by the time they get there, hopefully. And then we have uh, technical guys with us in this car, in this truck. They check the car out and if it's okay to drive, we go with it in tandem to the bivouac and prepared for the next day's race. Keeping the Century Racing CR4 going will be the responsibility of crew chiefs Rudy Balzar and Julian Hardy, and the pair will not be short of bits and pieces to keep Mark Corbett and Francois Jordan in the race. Well, look, we've got a spare engine, which is not actually kind of change the engine, but we can strip parts off the engine. We've, we've taken two gearboxes. We'll take basically all the sensors, all the parts of the engines, consumables, plenty of consumables, a whole load of drive shafts, hubs it's basically two two and a half sometimes even parts for three cars we'll have enough space now next year for the whole year just in the space that we've got here now the sa challenge on four wheels should be taken seriously at dakar 2012. the south african challenge on the dakar rally 2012 will not be confined to four wheels veteran off-road motorcycle champion Dale curtis tackles the dakar for the first time and will lead a squad of drivers who will fly the south african flag in the motorcycle category. Well, we're in uh, final preparations for uh, 2012 Dakar. We've just come back from a trip in the dunes in Namibia with Ingo Waldschmidt. We, uh, yeah, he taught us quite a lot about riding the sand. The experienced Countess has been around for more years than he cares to remember, but is relishing the challenge that the Dakar Rally offers the motorcycle brigade. Yeah, you know, I think it's everybody's dream to go and do Dakar, you know, since uh, early days. We've all watched it, and uh, now finally Broadly can give me the opportunity to go and, uh, and live my dream. And, yeah, it's my first Dakar and um, it's going to be a new experience for me. Motorcycle regulations have been changed slightly for next year's Dakar rally, with a veteran South African set to tackle the marathon event on a KTM. Well, this is the new uh, KTM fa factory replica. It's a 450cc, which of course, uh, you know, the Dakar organizers have limited to 450cc this year. Last year we could still get away with riding a 690 in the amateur classes, but that's no more, you know. It's, uh, it's only 450 in the motorcycle category. It's uh, as close to the factory bikes as, uh, as can be, almost identical. And uh, I think it's down to the right at the end of the day. Off-road legend Alfie Cox pioneered South African motorcycle participation on the Dakar Rally with a KwaZulu-Natal rider for many years, an integral part of the powerful KTM factory team. There are four South Africans going on motorcycles this year. Uh, there's myself. I'll be sponsored by uh, Broadlink, which is your corporate telecom solutions provider. Uh, Greg Roth and Neil Scott Williams from Subtech, and uh, uh, Ian Stevenson from Comsol. And of course, we've got our adopted Kiwi going along as well. You know, um, Chris Birch, and he'll be riding for Comsol as well. Preparing for the world's toughest race is time-consuming and needs attention to detail. Apart from mechanical work on machinery, Curtis and other members of the squad have also been hard at work preparing physically for two weeks in the saddle. There's loads of preparation, you know, besides the mechanical work on the bike, there's lots of physical preparation, lots of mountain biking. I've been doing Pilates with uh, P6 Pilates Studio. And of course, time on the bike. I've been riding my uh, 300 um, XCW in the mountains, in the rocks. And that uh, gives you a lot of physical strength. 
We've still had a lot of events in between. We've done a Red Bull uh, Sea to Sky in Turkey. Again, going straight back into Namibia. And uh, every weekend we spend on a motor motorcycle. The Dakar Rally will cap a long and illustrious career for Daryl Curtis. Despite all his vast experience, the South American Classic will be a completely new challenge for the popular rider who has his sights set on a top 10 finish. Well, there's lots of pressure, you know. Uh, everybody looks uh, back to Alfie Cox's days when he was on a motorcycle and his successes. There's lots of pressure on me to do well. And uh, my goal is to go and finish Dakar. And I think if I finish, I'm going to do well. The goal will obviously be to be uh, a top 10 finisher. And uh, yeah, who knows? I'm going to take each day as it comes. If I feel comfortable, I'll push on each day. But at this stage, I haven't done it before. So it's all new. And I'm going to take each day as it comes. And then there is the man who's won more South African motorsport championships than any other competitor. For this legend in off-road racing, the love affair with the Dakar Rally continues, and this year he will be competing for the 11th time. Yeah, you know, you know, I started with a motorcycle seven times on the bike, and you, you know, you want to walk away from it, but it's 11 times coming up now, and uh, it's crazy, really. It's like a drug, you know. You go back to that race, and yeah, the bikes. It's I'm, I spend a lot of time on my motorcycle, but. Uh, I just think I had 30 years of it and you know, when do you really want to stop and I had a really good innings on a motorcycle, yeah sure I'd like to race a couple of masters because I can race in the master class now when you're getting close to 50 but uh, motorcycles always in my blood will never, never go away. But this year, for, for next year, very exciting things for us, you know, we're in the new Volvo, a Swedish made vehicle, so we're going in the new Volvo XC60, the diesel for the Dakar and very exciting at the moment. The Evergreen Cox will again be partnered on the Dakar Rally by German businessman Jürgen Schroeder, who owns the PS Laser team, with the two friends competing together for the fourth time in South America. Yeah, Jürgen obviously is the owner and the sponsor of the team, and you know, really in a great position with Jürgen, where he's the navigator, I'm the driver, and also to give me that opportunity and, and you know, to let him fulfill his dreams as well, you know. For up-to-the-minute coverage of all the drama of the Dakar Rally 2012, tune in to Supersport, your world of champions between January the 1st and the 15th. Check daily transmission times in your local media or on your electronic program guide. We're confident that the Rainbow Nation flag will be flying high in Chile, Argentina and Peru during Dakar Rally 2012.